All right. Is everybody good? Can you <laughs> hear me? Person. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, awesome. All right. Well, well, good afternoon, good morning, good night, wherever it is that you are in the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, you all saw the I posted the um uh, the university they reached out and they um they're giving me an award for social justice, which is uh pretty cool. So I appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for the congratulations and the well wishes. Um, what I wanted to do today was uh, to go through bank grants in general and to uh, to show you all how to complete a bank grant. Um, so we're going to go through just some general information about bank grants overall. And then we're going to get into the details about how to apply uh, for the bank grants. If you have questions, I do not want you to lose your question. Um, I don't want you to lose your question. So go ahead and type it um, into the, uh, do we have a Q&A box? Uh, we don't have the Q&A, but type it into, I thought we had a Q&A box. Uh, but type it into the chat so that you don't forget it. Um, but if I'm in the middle of a train of thought, I'll finish that and then go back to it. You can always raise your hand. Um but just because of how I'm going to go through the information uh, today, I prefer that you not interrupt me uh, while I'm in a train of thought. Um, I think it'll help everybody if we um, if we go through it this way. And I'm, I promise I'm going to answer everybody's question, no matter how many questions we have. We'll stay until every question is answered. We're going to give you as much help as we can. All right. So uh, if you're ready, uh, if you can hear me, press one. If you can hear me, press one. If you can hear me, press one. All right. Uh, some of you are at work, and so I understand you can't talk. Um, so, all right. All right. Now, sounds good. All right. So let's go. So um, in the United States of America, uh, we have laws and our laws govern govern everything that happens in this country. And so when a, when an individual decides to start a bank, um, there are certain requirements that come along with starting a bank. One of those requirements is the CRA, the Community Reinvestment Act. And when you are going after grants for work in your community, uh, you can you can activate the Community Reinvestment Act uh, or you can ignore it, of course. Um, but in, in activating it, all I mean is that you can take that information and do something with it. Simply put, every bank in the country is required to give money back to the community. They're required to give money back to the community. Now, the government does not tell them how to do it, but it does tell them that they're required to do it. So every bank has the option on how they want to give the money back. Some of them give all their money to the United Way and ask United Way to give it out. Some of them have clearing houses. Some of them use other foundations. But most of the banks have a foundation or a grants department that allocates that allocates the um, the money for them. And so what you want to do is begin to search out those bank grants so that you can get um, so that you can get that money for your community program. One of the advantages of bank grants is typically when they give you money, they'll give you the lump sum check up front um, and you'll you'll build the relationship with them over time. But based on the grant application, once they've awarded it, um, they'll give you the lump sum check. And normally those grants will range from like $10,000 up to $25,000. Um, I've gotten a lot of bank grants. Um, and so we have lots of examples for you. But I want to start at the very beginning just to make sure that everybody knows how to find the bank grants. If you're interested in money for your community, then bank grants are something you do not want to ignore. You do not want to overlook. And a lot of people, they... Um, they they do work with banks on one side of the office and they never, ever go to the nonprofit side. Some of you have your for-profit accounts. Some of you even have nonprofit accounts with your banks. And, and those banks never even told you about the um about the, the the money that's available on the other side. So what ends up happening is people that really care about the work, they uh, people that really, really care about their communities and care about the work that they're doing, they end up working, they end up doing a lot of the work and getting only a little bit of the funding. And it's not because they don't need the money, it's simply because they don't know where it is. Um, and and then because they don't know where it is, 
the money that's available just keeps going to the same people over and over again. And it never really makes it to those that need it most. And so when we look at bank grants, you have to know that it is number one for everybody in the community. They primarily give to nonprofits. Um, and they primarily give to nonprofits. And when they give, there's something specific that they're looking for in return. Let me show you how to find bank grants. All right. How to find bank grants. Okay. That is a grant from U.S. Bank. Let's look at the bank grants. So the first thing you do, um, you type in the name of the name of your city and banks. All right. Banks in Nashville. They have First Bank, Home Trust Bank, uh, First Bank Downtown. And um, First Citizens Bank, Wells Fargo Bank, First National Bank, First Citizens Bank, uh, True Point Bank, First Horizon Bank, TD Bank, First Citizens, Wells Fargo, PNC Bank, et cetera, et cetera. Now, all of these banks have grants available to you. Some of their processes are easier than others, um, but let's take a look. So once you find a bank, whether it's your bank or not, whether it's your bank or not, you go to the search bar and you just type in the name of that bank and the word grants. All right. So when you type in the name of that bank and the word grants, it's going to pull up what's called their grant site. OK. And here is TD Bank. And they have three ways to get funding. Charitable Foundation, the TD Ready Challenge and the Community Sponsorship Program. Um, sponsorships are one form of, of grants. Sponsorships are one form of grant. Sponsorships. Um, their those checks are oftentimes smaller, um, but you don't have to write very much for it. You can actually have your nonprofit sponsorship letter and send it to them. And if they like it, then they'll give you money. All right. It's just that simple. All right. This, uh, the TD Ready Challenge is something uh, different. So let's take a look at this. This is how their challenge works. Um, they ask application to applicants to present their unique approach to addressing a problem that serves the community. This year, they ask for solutions to address systemic barriers to affordable housing and increase awareness, I mean, increase access for those moving from transitional housing into permanent homes. And so if you want to learn more, uh, these are their recipients from last year. Um, if you want to learn more, you click there. Um, it gives you more details, okay? And if you want to contact them about this, then you just click on the Contact Us page, all right? So let's go back. Now you have the, the Charitable Foundation. Inside their Charitable Foundation, you see they have a few different grant opportunities. They have regional grants, Housing for Everyone competition, and the Capacity Building Fund. And I'll explain these to you uh, just because I have experience with TD Bank. The capacity building fund is when they give you a few thousand dollars to take a class uh, to help build the capacity of your nonprofit. So if you need training, you need board support, um, you need to learn something, um, that's what capacity building is for. It makes your organization stronger. Your regional grants are where they fund local programs that are making an impact uh, in the community. And then housing for everyone competition. That's the one that we just searched. So the regional grants, this is how you apply. So currently they accept applications on a bi-monthly basis and they record them. They uh they review them according to their calendar. So here it is. So uh some of you have uh have my grants calendar. Um, but when you're looking at the grants calendar, what I have as a grants calendar is built on all of the funding sources. So because I've been doing this for so long, um, I know the pattern and how they fund. Uh, but let's look at where we are right now. OK, so. This is. Their deadline. So if you apply, if you applied by. Um, December 22nd, then they communicate their decision by the end of February. Um, and they need their report. Um, by October. If you if you apply by February 16th, then you'll be notified by end of April 
and the uh, the report, you'll see the impact report, December 2024. Uh, so depending on where you are in the year, and I told you all that according to the grants calendar, and I'll go through it really quickly here. Um, actually, let me take questions. Let me check for questions first before I go through the grants calendar. Did anybody have any questions so far? Let me check for questions. All right. Y'all good? Okay. All right. So I'm going to go through the grants calendar just so just so that you know, um, and then we're going to get back to uh, to this bank and a few others. All right. So in the grants calendar, you have January, which is the beginning of the year. That's where you want to take pledges. Actually, let me start with December um, because the, the nonprofit cycle works a little different than a calendar year. So December is what we call end of year giving or major gifts. This is where people are giving because they really care. It's the holidays. They're warm and fuzzy. Um, they're also giving because they need tax breaks and tax write offs. All right. And if you're in position, they will contact you and give you money. All right. Then you prepare for January. January is where you want to prepare for pledges, where people pledge what they're going to give for the next year. Um, that's where you allow people to give um, monthly. They can make their pledge for the whole year and give it monthly. Um, and you can use software like Givelify or Network for Good. I really like Givelify. I do not like Network for Good. Network for Good will put you on a contract. And if you try to break that contract, um, they'll charge you for the whole contract. And I don't like that. But Givelify, um, you pay as you use it. You pay for, for what is used. Okay. And they have a really good um, um, you know, mainframe and, and it's really easy to use. And there are other ones, but those are the ones that I like. All right. And you can also use Moon Clerk and just let people give a donation. They just type in the amount that they want to give. All right. Um, so that's January. In February, you want to prepare for bank grants. And you'll see this bank grant deadline is February the 16th. Even though they, they review every other month, um, they told you it's bi-monthly. Um, you see that their uh, deadline is February 16th. And you'll notice that most bank grants become available in February um, and their deadlines will end really quickly. Typically, a grant is open. Um, a large grant might be open for 30 days. Uh, grants have been open as little as 10 days. Uh, I'm actually on a grant review committee and they opened a grant. Um, they announced it last week. They're opening it for 15 days um, and we need to make decisions by March so the money can be deployed quickly. Um, and we're giving away $300,000 uh, with that program. Um, the um, so you have February, that's when bank grants uh, come available. Um, and then what we enter what we call grant season, that's when most of the foundation grants are available. And so March and April, that's grant season, you want to get those applications done and out. Um, and then you want to prepare for state grants, uh, state grants, you'll see a lot of them being announced in April and May. Um, and even though federal grants are available all year long, you'll see the final push for federal grants in the month of May. Those deadlines come quickly and it's a lot of paperwork. So you want to make sure that you're ready for it ahead of time. In order to be ready for it ahead of time, you want to activate the Freedom of Information Act so that you can get a copy of the federal grant, uh, last year's winning grant before it comes out this year. And that way you'll know what to look for, what to write, how to format it. Um, it's kind of like getting the answers to the test beforehand. All right. And in that regard, federal grants are easier to write than some other grants. They are larger in dollar amount. They're larger in terms of the amount of writing and the amount of work you have to put in the number of pages. Um, but for me, they're easier because they tell you exactly what to write. All right. And you just say to them what they ask you. Um, a federal grant is normally like the narrative for a federal grant might be anywhere from 10 to 25 pages. Um, but the attachments might be 100 pages worth of attachments. All right. So that takes you to June. By June, you want to make sure that you're having another board meeting so that you can review your your um, so that you can review your budget for the year, your goals for the year, et cetera. Make sure that's documented because some organizations are going to ask for your board minutes or a list of your board meeting um, board members. Um, and then August, if you are in a city that is more than 200,000 people, your city is going to start talking about community grants from your city and from your county. They're going to start talking about those in August and September. All right. 
um, like a big city like Atlanta or Detroit or something like that, they're going to announce those grants in August um, because they have a large um, they have a large population. Um, they're going to they're going to be taking in a lot of applications. They need time to process them, et cetera. If you're in a smaller city, they're not going to talk about those grants until December and they're going to be due in January so they can be reviewed um, processed in February, decisions made, uh, recommendations made by March, and then they're going to uh, vote on them in April. So the money will be available in June. Uh, Lord, I just, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I just took that sidebar, but I don't want y'all to get confused. Right now we're in the month of August. In the month of August, if you're in a big city, um, those grants are going to come out. If you're not in a big city during the month of August, your local grants from Chamber of Commerce, Rotary Club, 4-H Club, Kiwanis Club, small foundations, um, all, all of those grants are going to be available. Even utility companies and hospitals, those grants are going to be available and they're going to announce them in August and September because they want to give out the money in October. The reason they're giving out money in October is because they're going to use that to raise more money for the next year. Um, then in the month of October, what you need to do is be prepared for the end of be prepared for the end of the fiscal year for banks. So they're ending their year October 31st. That's when they turn in their tax forms and everything, or that's when they close out their tax year and they have money left over. And so that's the last opportunity for uh for sponsorships. These are grants that you don't have to write. All right. You want to go ahead and do those. And at the same time, you want to prepare for uh Prepare your social media. Make sure you have lots of testimonials and stories and pictures of who you've helped, even before you were incorporated, even outside of, um, of you know, you having your 501c3 in place. Just talk about and um, and highlight all of the things that you've done all year long, because in November, you want to be ready for Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and that's when people all over the country are motivated to give, all right? One of the grants that is a competition-based grant is the FedEx grant. They give $50,000 to local community organizations, but it's a competition and it's really based on who's most popular, all right? So I'll go through the, and then you're back at December, which is end of year given. Let me go through the grants calendar one more time uh, for those people that, um, that got lost or didn't hear me. So December is end of year giving and annual gifts. January, you wanna prepare for pledges. February, you want to work on bank grants. March and April is foundation grants. May is state grants. June is board meeting. Um, August, you want to be ready. Big cities will do their community development grants and community grants from your city and your county. September, you want to be ready for local community grants from local nonprofits like United Way 4-H Club, Rotary Club, utility companies, um, um, uh, hospitals, and local foundations. And then in November, you want to be ready for Giving Tuesday, which is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. And uh, and that's uh, a popularity um, a popularity move. So you want to make sure that people know about what you're doing, because on Giving Tuesday, they're going to make donations, which takes you back to December, which is um, annual gifts. All right. Does anybody have any questions? OK. All right. So this is their grants calendar. And it shows you how to apply. All right. Bank grants will always give you a guideline. So this is their guideline. When they give you a guideline, you want to read it. All right. You want to read it. If you know you want to build a relationship with that bank, then it's worth saving. All right. This is going to give you the inside track and the background information. Is there someone I can contact if I have... Programmatic questions? Yes. And this is who you contact. All right. Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., uh, North Carolina, South Carolina. That's considered Mid-South. And boom, there you go. So depend if you're in Florida, uh, right there. Okay. So take a look at this link and see where you are and how you can connect with them. Oh, somebody said it will not let you. I want to know what I have. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, I think you missed a lot. 
<laughs> that would not let me unmute. I just want to know what I had missed. I don't know why it um I don't know why it didn't let you unmute. Um I didn't I didn't disable it. Um, but what we went over was the grants calendar, the law that requires banks to give money back to the community, and how to find uh, bank grants. This link right here is for TD Bank. So if you are in, if you're in New York, uh, Southern Connecticut, Northern New Jersey, um, there's your link. If you're in um, New England, there's your link. If you're in uh, Pennsylvania, Central, Southern, or Coastal New Jersey, there's your link. Uh, if you're in Delaware, there's your link. Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C., North Carolina, South Carolina, there's your link. In Florida, there's your link. You want to contact that person and ask them a question. Um, yes. All right. Okay. Who will review uh, your applications? The application are going to be reviewed at the local level and final recommendations made by the Foundation Grants Committee. Okay. It was approved by the Foundation Board of Directors. Um, all right. So that's that bank. Everybody that's in that area should uh, should do it. At the very least, look at it. Okay. It's not going to not gonna hurt you any, not going to hurt to look at it. And it's not going to cost you anything. Okay. Um, and the contact, they have those same people. All right. These people are your friends. They are your friends. They have money and they want to give it out. So you need to connect with them. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Any questions about them? All right. Let me look at another bank. Uh, PNC Bank has a long application, but um, let's let's look at them anyway. All right, here's their grant program. So their given priorities are education, economic development. Oh, education, economic development is that all? Yeah, yeah, education and economic development. That's their that's their funding areas. All right, so. Let's say we were doing Alina's program is grandparent assist. She would look at if she looked at education, she might want to um, to do a grant for uh, children that are being raised by grandparents. OK, um, and you need money for direct service or programs for them, um, professional development, workforce development, family or uh, community engagement in children's early learning. So maybe after school programs, summer camps, um, extracurricular activities, um, maybe even buying computers for them. Or if grandparents have to go back to work, then she could ask for money so the grandparents can take a class at the community college. Um, or um, the grandparent might need a computer um, because now they have a new child in the home. Or for economic development, uh, community services, arts and culture, community development, stabilization, moderate and low income areas. She might do it for grandparents that live in low to moderate income areas and are taking care of children. Maybe they need their porch to be redone. Um, maybe they need a hot water heater. Uh, maybe um, they need uh, they need something in the house for the youth. Maybe they just need food. All right. Um, these are the things they do not support. They do not support organizations that discriminate. They do not support religious organizations except for non-sectarian activities. That means that they will, like Salvation Army, for example. Salvation Army is a church. They are a church and they have Jesus in their mission statement. However, um, they could get money from TD Bank because... Um, they have non-sectarian activities. They have activities that have nothing to do with their religious stuff. All right. So that's their after school program. Um, that's their shelter, their food pantry, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're part of a church group and you need money for something, um, you can, oh, PNC Bay, sorry. If you're part of a church and you need money for something, you can still apply. You can still apply. However, it has to be clear that this 
that you are not discriminating, that this is not for your church exclusively, that this is for the community, and this is one of your non-sectarian activities. I even encourage churches to have an outreach website that has nothing to do with your religious practices, but has everything to do with what you do for the community. All right. Um, they do not support annual funds for hospitals, colleges, universities. They do not support individuals or private foundations. They do not support conferences or seminars. They do not support tickets and goodwill advertising. All right. If you want to find the contact in your area, you go to your region. Um, I'm in North Carolina, so I click here, and here's the person, Eastern Carolina and Western Carolina. All right. What I want you all to do right now is if you're in any one of these regions, Alabama, Arizona, California, Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, Washington, Washington, D.C., or Wisconsin. I want you to use this link and find the PNC contact person. So what y'all are getting right now is different from what anybody online would ever tell you. They will not tell you this because they do not know this. Uh, Coach Derek Harper calls them dancing bears. They are they're people that may have taken one seminar um, and then they run out and sell it because they're good salesmen, but they're not experts at the thing. And what I'm telling you is the inside track that's going to put you above everybody else, light years ahead of everybody else, puts you at the beginning of the line. And this is what you do. Find the contact person reach out to them and and ask and you introduce yourself and you just tell them this simple statement hello my name is such and such from blah 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 nonprofit corporation we provide blah 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 and i wanted to know if these if you all would fund any of these types of programs and what the next steps would be um, yeah. coach i came on the end of it so this is um this is a pnc bank uh grant for yeah. uh, our, okay Mm -hmm. This is PNC Bank grant. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, now, there are some banks that have extra steps. Wells Fargo is one of those banks that has an extra step, actually. They have a thing that shows their grant process. And some people get so discouraged because they don't look. All right. So here is their process. All right. Now, it looks real unassuming, looks real simple. Yes, yes. This looks real simple, but because people don't read, they're like, where's the grant link? Where's the grant link? I don't see it. I can't tell you how many times people say, I went to the site and I didn't see it. Well, it's because you really didn't look. You didn't look. So if you read this, it has the grant eligibility, grant proposals, and how they're measured. They will not consider grants for individuals, organizations, religious organizations, unless they're engaged in programs that are non-sectarian, um, labor, alumni, fraternal or organizations, uh, recreation, uh, athletic sports, for-profit entities, including startup small businesses, uh, grants specifically for travel, including student trips or tours. They do not give to any of those things. But if you look way down here, um, they have the online application portal, but that's not step one. Nonprofits that have not been invited to apply, but align with our strategic focus areas and meet eligibility outcomes, reporting requirements, may register and submit a grant interest form. So when you're going after a Wells Fargo grant, this is what you want to click first. If this is your first time going, you want to click there. All right? Okay. Um, once you click here, they're going to send you an email that approves you to go farther, and it's going to give you an invitation code. When it gives you that code, then you come back to this same um, website and you click the application portal. Again, for Wells Fargo, you do the grant interest form first, and then you do the online application portal. Okay? All right. Anybody have any questions about that? So let's take a look. Mm -hmm. um, 
one of my writers, do we have um do we have the uh the questions that Wells Fargo asked me? Actually, let me let me use somebody else's. I'll use somebody. Um somebody that has their nonprofit already in place. All right, give me a volunteer. I wish. <laughs> I, I have one. All right. That was Alina and somebody else that said I have one. Um, Alina. Phyllis. Go ahead. Alina and then Josh. Phyllis. All right. We'll do both of those. Okay. All right. Y'all ready to see this? Ready, ready, ready. Okay. So, um, all right. Well, Alina, can you, oh Lord, how much of this is personal information? Do you have a, a number that, that you can share here? I don't want to put your business out. Just hold on one second. All right. Oh, okay, it's 980-833-7142. All right. Okay. And we have that other information. I'm going to their email we can use. Grandparentassist at gmail.com. Grandparentassist at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Grandparentassist at gmail.com. Password test me one. Is that all lowercase? Capital T E S T M E, the number one. Capital T E S T M E one. All right. And the zip code? 28215. 28215. When they ask you the zip code, they're actually checking your eligibility. All right. Uh, so if you're not in a zip code that they serve, or if you're in a zip code that's, uh, if if you're not in a zip code they serve, then they'll they'll cut you out. All right. So now, um, for the the tax ID of the organization of your nonprofit organization, and this number is public information. It's not private, so uh, you can share. Hold on, let me find it. All right. Does anybody have any questions while she's finding that? Okay. All I don't right. so oh go ahead. No, I don't have a question, but I do have a statement. I wanted to say thank you um for the Costco information. I got my first Costco grant. Congratulations. How thank long did you. it take? Um maybe five minutes. <laughs> oh wow, wow, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. Congrats. Was, crazy. People don't, I know people don't believe me. People don't, they think I just be talking. You believe me, we just wait. <laughs> Get my 5.3C, <laughs> we waiting. <laughs> well, all I did congratulations. Was, um, did what you said. I copied the application because they do want a hard copy application. Mm -hmm. Um I uh took my 501c3 uh with me and um I went in, I asked for the marketing director, mm -hmm. the marketing manager, because that's who's going to probably be assisting you guys. Mm -hmm. And immediately I built rapport with him at that particular location. Um, I signed it in front of him. I dated it in front of him. I left the information. Don't date the information, because if you're not going to go on that date, then you don't want to put that date on there mm -hmm. until you get there. And I handed him the information. He looked over it. He said, give me a few minutes. I'm going to cut your um, your money. So he gave me a cash card. I thought it would be $1,000. Now, this is what he did say per Costco's. It's per their discretion, I guess. Mm -hmm. And they have several people to assist. Um, I got $100 from him, but he does it every quarter. And that is, if there's any money left over, just like you said, with the banks, Mm -hmm. um, in this statement that you made, he said he'll directly contact you himself and give you more money. Oh, nice. So That's a I just wanted to say yeah. that out loud because it yeah. is real. Thank you. 
My pleasure. It is very, very real. Yes, thank you. I am thank you. Thank you. you can go to all of the Costco's. Um, just take a day, a, a Costco day, and maybe do a Sam's day, and maybe okay. a Walmart day, you know, your day. Or mm -hmm. in the order that I say, if I'm in the area and there's a Sam's, a Costco, and a Walmart, I'm doing just that area day. It's up to you guys. I just yep. thank you. My one of my students, she actually, she prints them out because you need to have a hard copy and she just has a folder in her car. And when she passed, and she even does it when she's out of town. That's what I did. <laughs> oh, wow. And that when she rides sweet. by one, she just pull in and go there. But she does this, like her strategy, and you all can reach out to her, Rocky Lewis. Um, she does the same strategy all the time. She doesn't even write a, a lot of the grants. She just does the smaller ones. She just does a lot of them. Walmart, okay. Big Sporting Goods, CBS, Costco, Nike, all of them. Just over wow. and over. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And okay. Tanya Watkins, uh, Walmart gave her a truckload of stuff and then asked her to come by and uh, pick up another check for $5,000. All they wanted to do was take a picture with her. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I have one thing to share as well. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody that Need Canva, do Canva 5013C. I got mine for free. I got the premium. Ooh, so y'all no, show it out. Get it for free. <laughs> Canva for free. Yep. Yes. Free is for um, me. Yep. I want to tell <laughs> too, um, yeah, 4848.org just contact me and told me they're gonna be building my website for free. For how much? For free. <laughs> Yeah, I'm waiting for the contact. Me. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh -huh. cool. That's cool. And They're while called 48, 48, uh, 48 and 48. 48.org. Mm-hmm. 48, 48, I N 48. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if you have a nonprofit, all you have to do is have your 501c3. You can get Google for nonprofits and they'll give you, um, like, you know how some people have their email at gmail.com. Uh -huh. They'll give you a, a an, an official email, and they'll give you up to ten thousand dollars in free advertisement for your nonprofit. Wow! Uh, Google for nonprofits. So it's Google for nonprofit. Google for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And um, Alina, there's a, a grant that just got announced for North Carolina um, small businesses. This is one um, I think you should apply for your for profit business. Um, grandparent assist. Um, you might be able to assist grandparents in starting their businesses. It comes from mm -hmm. NC Idea Foundation. Nice. What's the name of the foundation? NC Idea. It's fifty thousand dollars. They're an awesome organization. I can't say. Um, well, I can't say enough about them, but I can't say too much more. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody that's in North Carolina should apply. All right. Well, it's for profit, not yeah. for nonprofit. Uh, they give to both for profits and nonprofits. They gave my for profit company fifty thousand dollars two years in a row. Oh, so oh good. I could I could fill out two forms then. <laughs> <laughs> so it's NC Federal. N C I D E A. Oh, N C N C I D E. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Yep, okay. I'm ready. So it's two six zero five three seven zero six zero zero three nine one three. Oh, sound like a lot of numbers. Hold on. Your tax ID two six zero five. Uh, -uh that's not it. Yeah. The employee ID number. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm thinking you're talking about it's the, about uh, nine the numbers. <laughs> okay, they got two oh, digits and then a dash. Oh, you were talking about the five hundred one three C number. Okay, my There's bad. A whole bunch of digits. Okay, right. <laughs> it's nine three. Uh huh. Three nine five zero four one seven. All right, nine three three nine five zero four one seven. All right, that's it. If you are a school, they ask for your school ID, but you're not. If you're a school, they ask for the school ID here, but you're not. And that's it. 
You ready to submit, Elena? I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. <laughs> All right. Oh, Lord, the password ain't strong enough. <sighs> okay. Let's do change me. C H A N G E M E 2024. Oh, hold on. Estimation. And 15 characters. Good gracious. These passwords get crazy. Change me. Capital C H A N G E M E 2024. Lord, I'm telling everybody your um, password. Yeah. <laughs> but change it, Alina. <laughs> All right. All no right. Problem. Uh, it's change me 2024 explanation mark with a capital C. All right. But passwords don't match. Jesus. Here we go. C A N G E M E 2024 exclamation. C H A N G E M E 2024 exclamation. All right. And then um, they sent the activation email to you. All right. Grandparent assist. You go there, activate your email, and you take it from there. Okay. All right, you got it, Elena? I hope she got it. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. I'm just waiting. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, who is the other person? Thank you. Uh, Phyllis. There, was, there was one more. Phyllis? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, your 501 is already in place? It is. Okay. All right. Let's spell your first name for me. P-H-Y-L-L-I-S. Mm -hmm. Stewart is my last name. Correct. A phone number 404-990-0267. Email IHS. Mm -hmm. Global 358 at Gmail. All right. Did I get that right? You did, sir. Okay. I H S dot global brief dot eight at gmail. All right. Password. I'll do the same one. Change. And that's capital C. Change me two o two four exclamation. Change. For information. All right. Organization name? Indelible Holistic Solutions. Oh, Lord. Andy. L. <laughs> right there? Mm hmm. I spelled it wrong. I still. No, you I did it. Oh, that's correct. Indelible. Oh, let me see. I can't see. I it's one L. Yeah. yeah. Indelible. Holistic. H O L I S T I C. That just simply means we leave an indelible mark that cannot be erased. We bring people whole and we are someone's answer. It's all in okay. the name. I love it. Matter of fact, I think you should, uh, you have that as a tagline. It's all in the name. Yeah, that's good. I had that down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's the zip code? 30135. All right. And your tax ID number. Um, I believe 92 dash 914 3498. I normally remember it by heart, so if it's not right, <laughs> I'll try to look it up. All right. Oh, uh, so that area is not eligible. Hmm, let's see, it's because of the area. I believe so. You said sometimes they reject because of the area. Let me, I'm looking. Yeah. The tax ID number is correct. Uh, the tax ID number is correct. Any question? Hmm. Let me. Let's see. Um, let me let me search it real quick. Okay. Make sure. Uh, how long has your nonprofit your uh um your since I've been established? Uh huh. I want to say um almost two years. It's over a year now. The the five hundred one c three, 
Yes, sir. Okay. Let me search the number real quick. 92-914. Oh, that's why. 92-912-3498. That may be it. I'm going to look. Okay, hold on just a minute. Okay. Got it. EIN. I just want to jump in here real quick. They no longer set an application until February. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Remember I told y'all the door opens in February? But they're going to, um, they might not send you an automatic email. You just have to go back there and do that again in February. And actually, um, Alina, the guy for North Carolina, he's actually, his office is in Charlotte. Really? Okay. You got his address too? I actually do. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Wait, let me see if I can search the name. All right. There we go. Okay. Oh, I did. 214 S1. 214. 214 versus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. So <laughs> I'm not going to go through the steps because they, they haven't opened their door yet. Sure. I, I get the chance. Make sure you do that, that site. Got it. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. All right. Now, since we're on Wells Fargo, let's go to Wells Fargo's application. Um, uh, one of my writers. Oh, hold on. Uh, Carrie put something. Uh, Microsoft also offers free Microsoft 365 business premium. That includes your business email for free. Um, once your nonprofit is approved, they'll send you a welcome letter and access to their nonprofit portal. So if any of you need that, you know, the email Microsoft 365, um, you can get it for free. All right. And anytime that anybody gives you anything, make sure you include their logo on your website as a supporter, where they give you $100 or a million dollars, where they give you um, a piece of cake or a piece of property. Always recognize them in big ways and include their logo on your website because money attracts money. All right. Um, and even though the Wells Fargo application is not out yet, the good thing is I've already been awarded this grant. So I'm going to show you all the questions and the answers. Would y'all like that? Absolutely. Thank uh -huh. you. Uh-huh. You're welcome. Um, writers, can you put the Wells Fargo uh draft, um, the one that was awarded, put that in here so I can click on it, please. There are a few things that you're gonna want to do in the background before um before you apply. So go ahead and update your website because they're going to look at your website. If you have a social media, go ahead and and put your pictures up there. If you have pictures in your phone, pictures of events, uh, go ahead and put that there. Um, if there's information that you've already found, little data points, statements of fact, you do not want to put them all at the same time, like in one big list. But you can have them, like you can go to Canva and tell Canva to, uh, to do one image per point. So if you have a data point that says unemployment is low and we need to fix the unemployment, that's one. I mean, unemployment is too high. We need to fix unemployment. That's one graphic. If you have a quote about grandparents, if you have um, a news article about youth, all of the types of things, uh, I think Ashley Ann calls them content buckets, all the things about what you do from every different angle, put that on your website and on your social media because when you apply for this bank grant, they're going to look you up. If they can't find anything, it's going to be questionable. But if when they look you up, they see stuff and it's in line, then they're going to fund you. Okay. So um, let's take a look. Oh. I have a quick question real quick. Yes. So when uh, 
piggybacking off of when you were saying about pictures of the event and everything, if we don't have any pictures of that particular event, do we just uh, put random event pictures or just events that we attended? Um, yes and yes. If you don't have a picture of the event you want to do, put a picture of some event. Okay. Thank you and so much. The rationale behind it is if you are there, you're representing this organization. Okay. So it's not that Jay Hackett went to an event. Because my organization is Black Wall Street, Black Wall Street went to an event. That makes sense. You get what I'm saying? Yes. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and you can always use stock photos. You said stock photos? Uh-huh. Yes. Can you expound? Yeah, there are pictures. Uh, Mark, give me a website to um, to stock free images. Oh, it's stock free images. Yes, sir. One second. Mm -hmm. I think I know what you're saying. I think I got a list of them or uh, some I'm of them. Adobe but stock for one. Talking about Pixabay, um, Unsplash. Yeah. And the Adobe stock. Buy stock. What's it called? Yeah, we're gonna put some links in the um in the chat. So you can have them. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course, Canva has Canva has lots of them. All right. And you don't have to pay for them. In fact, if you go, if you get the um if you get the free Canva for nonprofits, then you have images right there. All right. Okay. Uh where is Thank you. My Wells Fargo grant. Where is my Wells Fargo grant? You know, somebody um somebody said something. They weren't being mean, uh, but it was just funny to me. They said, Man, heck, you're boring. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> oh man. Oh, absolutely really? not. Uh, absolutely not. Your information is valuable and I'm learning a lot. Yeah. So they, we're just they, quiet because we're taking a ton of notes. We're taking notes. We got to have a whole book of notes. <laughs> I don't agree with the person uh, either. So, yeah, uh, that's cool. They uh, matter of fact, it was wild because they uh, they said I was boring. Right. And then when um, they they saw me at Ashley Ann's um, event and they said, uh, they said, man. How come you don't do all that when you're online? I said, because when I'm online, we got work to do. Like, up here, we just talking. <laughs> but when it comes down to doing work, I mean, it's real paperwork. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so here are the answers. Alina, you were at Ashley's event with me, weren't you? Yes, I was. But yeah. That's how I met you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we met. I was at the Door Hope. I was at the Door Hope Church when I first um, met you, and we came back for the class, but you wasn't there, and we was like, "Oh man," because that uh, was like the best class ever for you know. Yeah, especially yeah, we had yeah. Business owner, we hadn't had that kind of exposure through church before having uh -huh. those kind of professional business events. I was excited. I came back like really on fire about that. Oh man, yeah. I remember Bishop Blue called me. I had to make it back. Uh, something happened with my son, and he called. He's like, "I take it you won't be here." And I had spoken to him the night before. Um, I guess he didn't put it together. Like I couldn't go to Richmond and come back that same night. Oh, okay. So badly. Um, that was a wonderful class. People were lining up. To get to your class. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh. <laughs> It's interesting how we've crossed paths, but I'm I'm not boring in person. <laughs> but you know, when I when I get off stage, we it like it really is stuff. You know what I mean? I like, really got to do this stuff. Got to get these applications in. Uh, but I, I'm he not. He was relaxed at his event. He was relaxed. He was boy. He just relaxed. He like, oh, I'm chilling. <laughs> but then when the guy saw me at, at Ashley event, he looked at me, his eyes popped out. He's like, whoa. Said, it's okay. No problem. Don't worry about it. 
Yeah, you gotta pay attention or you're gonna miss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So all right, so this is the Wells Fargo grant, y'all. Um, they ask a lot of questions, but all the answers are really simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we put this grant inside a grant suite. So all of you have access to to my answers. And um we update it so that it will remove my answers and put your answers in it. But for right now, let's take a look. They um they gave me $25,000 for this. And so if you do this, you can get up to $25,000. The mission statement. So this part is just the mission statement. But this is the we help. This is the we help statement. Okay. So the difference is you want to put your mission statement and then you want to further explain. So let me let me use Dawn as an example. Dawn, tell me your mission statement. In front of me. So uh, let me get my paper out real quick because I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm prepared. Oh, no, it's fine. No, I have my book down here. That's what I'm saying. You're keeping everyone on, uh, their, on their toes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So, um, okay. Okay, so our mission statement is Community Faith Mission Nonprofit is dedicated to empowering and inspiring entrepreneurs from Black, low, moderate neighborhoods, providing education, training, and strong emphasis on community ownership. Our mission is to break down barriers, cultivate innovation, foster economic success within undeserved communities. All right. All right, so yeah. we know that's too long. That's too long. Let, let me um uh huh. Let me work. <laughs> on I'm gonna delete this, but I'm gonna just kind of work on okay. it. Right now. Uh, say it, say it to me again. Okay, so I'm gonna just take out the other first part. So our mission state, our mission is the our mission statement is to break down barriers, cultivate. Uh, say say to me the whole thing, and oh, I'm the whole thing. Okay, community faith uh -huh. mission nonprofit organization is dedicated to empowering, inspiring entrepreneurs from. Black low income neighborhoods by providing funding solutions and strong emphasis on community ownership. Our mission is to break down barriers, cultivate innovation, and foster economic success within undeserved communities. And it goes on and on and on. All right, break down barriers. What was that second phrase? Um, break down After break down barriers, barriers cultivate innovation. Cultivate innovation. Innovation, yeah, and foster right. economic success within undeserved communities, and foster economic success within undeserved communities. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's change this. Our mission is to empower and inspire people low break All right. So this is what we're going to have. Our mission is to empower and inspire people from low income communities to break barriers and build wealth through entrepreneurship. Sounds good. So yes. go ahead and grab that as your updated mission statement. Okay. Updated mission. I wrote it down. All right. Um, so what we do, we take the mission statement and then you add to it a, a we help statement. Okay. When you're done, can you use mine as an example as well? Um, uh -huh. I can. Thank you. All right. So wow. what I've done is add 
a we help statement. So when we break this down, you have your mission statement right there. You have mm -hmm. your we help statement. And mm -hmm. you need something about your challenge. All right. Now, you don't want to put um, you don't want to put these words in particular. I'm just showing you how this statement is broken down for um, for the Wells Fargo application. And once you get it, you keep it and you duplicate it for other okay. things. Okay. All right. Businesses. Uh, okay. So you have your That's mission, okay. your mission um, statement, your we help statement and your challenge statement. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Your mission statement, that's always the same. And you have your we help statement, and then you have your challenge statement. So in my example here, I have our missions to start going expand black businesses. Uh, we help close the economic gaps for BIPOC people that experience disparities. At the same time, we're honoring the history of black people who lived and thrived at businesses and mm -hmm. property owners before the urban renewal wiped out the black business district. Wow. So this is our mission statement, uh -huh. our help statement, and our challenge statement. Okay. Okay. Right. So when you do a bank grant, and you can use this for other grants as well, the first part is mission, the second part is the we help, and the third part is the challenge. So I made up this challenge because I don't know exactly uh, what region Dawn is in. Um, but what I said was, our region is the city's most impoverished neighborhood, but we believe in the power of our people to grow beyond stereotypes and barriers. Okay, wonderful. Quick question. Yes. So would it be fair to say as we develop our mission, our we help and our challenge is to be not only clear, but succinct in our messaging, messaging and relatively be, say, under 100 words or less? Yes. The mission statement is actually 15 words or less, ideally. Okay. Oh, okay. The we help statement. So I've, I've worked on hours over time, and I actually copy and paste this over and over again. Okay. Once I, once I get it here, that's it. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. And I use it for multiple. Let me see how many words this is. Uh, 65 words. Oh, the okay. mission statement? Oh. Uh, my mission statement is 15. Okay. And, and the we help. help, as succinct as you can get it, is good. You want it to be short and powerful. Short and powerful. Okay. Um, what I've done just for training purposes, I've broken it up into these three pieces for you. Okay. <laughs> so this is the mission statement, the we help. Is the, the challenge, challenge statement also supposed to be challenge? It's, how many words are that? Uh huh. Uh, is that in the sixty-five with the we help? Yeah. Know. So the the we help will probably be the longest because you got to describe who you're serving. So if you know you're serving a specific city or a specific census tract or a specific neighborhood, you want to name it there. If you know that there are, um, if you know that there are, um. What do you call them? If you know that there are specific data points about homelessness or joblessness and or poverty or crime, you can put it there. So if I were breaking this down, I would do 15 words for the mission statement, okay. uh, 30 words for the we help statement, and 20 words for the challenge statement. We help is how many words for we help again? I'm sorry. 30. 30 and the challenge statement is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank All you. Right. Can we do uh, mine to make right. to revise it as well as as yeah. stated? Um, yeah. Thank you. Sir. Let me do that. Um, I'm about to delete this. Dawn, did you get it? Yes, sir. I got it. Thank you so much. Okay. Took a picture of it too. <laughs> All right. Yeah. In case so I this, up something. <laughs> this is my actual grant application, and uh, I can't mess this up. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Tell me what your mission statement is. Is that Phyllis? Yes, it is. Okay, go ahead. Our nonprofit is dedicated mm -hmm. to creating change by providing essential resources and support to empower individuals facing mm -hmm. adversity. 
I further went, we believe every act of kindness contributes to a brighter, more sustainable world. We make marks in the community that cannot be erased. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm doubling back. Hold on. It's together, but my eyes are. Um, I'm sorry. I lost it on my letterhead. Okay. Jeez. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Do you now, have it on your website? Uh, my website is being, it's actually being built as we speak. Okay. All right. I'm I have it on my oh, letter on my donations letter. That's where I am. I had to go in a donations letter. I have it other places, but this was the quickest place to get it. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. um, uh, we provide crates of love. That which contain a variety of essentials, including, and I put what it includes, non-perishable food items, toiletries, gift cards, water, etc., and mental health and behavioral health services vouchers, etc. is after that. Okay. So right. it's uh, but you know I'm I'm about to change it, right? Yes, I, I do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't well, you be surprised? All right. So Right, let me see. Black creates a little bit holistic help for marginalized communities to make. Not changed, didn't change All right. So, yeah, the mission statement, the help statement, and the challenge statement. All right. So, take a look at this, Miss Phyllis. Yes, sir. Okay, it stops at development. Correct. On yes. You say, okay. Absolutely. You use the words in the actual name because when you said it's all in the name, mm -hmm. um, you incorporated it in the mission statement, which I did before. I just didn't really know how to round it off, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. And yeah. so this is good. It still says what it was, right? But in a different manner. This yeah. is good. And there's one word I want to add, holistic health support. If I just say holistic health, they'll, they might mistake you as right. a well, yeah. hospital. Mm -hmm. um, but if we say holistic health support mm -hmm. for our communities, then that can be community health worker, lots of community health disparities, et cetera. Yes, et cetera. it is. All right. Because we're okay. dealing with a lot of homeless, um, single parents, veterans, 
uh, children. We yeah. we help everybody. But we hone in on focus mm -hmm. groups. You know. Yeah. So there we go. Your mission Thank statement, you so the help much. statement, and the challenge statement. You're very welcome. All right, I'm getting ready to delete this. All right, you got it. Yes, sir. Oh. Coach, right. are you able to do one more before you go on? All right. Yeah, I'll do one more. Let me um, let me grab this. Um, your mission statements are super duper important. If there's anything that you want to spend time getting right, it's your mission statement. Most other things, you can work on it later, figure it out, blah, 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 blah. But your mission statement you want to get it how you want it, because once you have it, you're going to use it over and over and over again. OK, is that considered the elevator pitch, so to speak? Or Yes. All of this together is considered the elevator pitch. Gotcha. And you should be able to say it in interviews, um, in podcasts, when the news media shows up. Like every time you if, if somebody's in my community, every time you hear me speak, I'm going to say start, grow and expand. As a matter of fact, I think we're updating it to start, grow, and scale. But I think start, grow, and expand has a, a better rhythm. So I test them out. But start, grow, and expand Black businesses and help revitalize Black Wall Street. I say it all the time, over and over and over again. So, Coach, when oh. somebody talks to me, I'm just going to say we empower and inspire. Yep. Uh, new entrepreneurs. That's my key yep. pitch right there. Yep. And your T-shirt should say empower and inspire. You have to make it branded. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. There was uh, one more. Me, Vanessa. Uh, right. Our mission statement, the Remini Community Center mission is to serve as a resource hub to bring much needed social services, community building and recreational activities to the Remini community. We are committed to fostering. Um, what community is that called? Remini, R-I-M-I-N-I. -I -I. All right. We are committed to fostering inclusive community participation and providing opportunities for individual and collective growth. Okay, what do you do? Um, of course, we're just starting. We're looking at doing after school programs, um, educational, entrepreneurship, the arts, um, celebration, um, senior activity classes, arts and craft, leadership development and training, things of that nature. Okay. Got it. And then the other part is of course, um, health fairs, cultural, uh, arts and culture festivals, carnivals and all those different things. Has there been gentrification in your area? Um, well, I I just moved back. I'm not in that area. I'm a little bit far from it, but I do travel down there. Um, it's mostly um, our our individuals there. Um, some others have, but it's most ours is there. It's just it's like dying out. We have a lot of history there, though. Um, dying out as in it's emptying out or yes. other people buying it? No, it's emptying out. That is true. We are at risk of losing precious history because we have a lot of history. We celebrate the vibrant... Oh. Um, we celebrate the vibrancy of Remini Community of the Remini community through arts and culture, supportive services, and education. We help the marginalized communities to find their voice and amplify their work. Amplify their work. The grassroots mobilizing. Our community is a historic African-American community that is at risk of losing precious history without collaboration. There's something. It's, you included entrepreneurship in here, didn't you? Yes. Let's see. All right, there we go. 
We celebrate the vibrancy of Rimini community through arts and culture, supportive services, and education. Actually, let me do entrepreneurship. Education. We help marginalized communities find their voice and rebuild wealth through inclusive grassroots participation. Our community is a historic African American community um, that is at risk of. You're not supposed to use a word more than once. We are an African American community that is at risk of losing precious history without collaborating collaboration. So here we go. Our mission statement, help statement, challenge statement. We celebrate the vibrancy of Remini community through arts and culture, entrepreneurship, and education. We help marginal we help the marginalized communities find their voice and rebuild wealth through entrepreneurship and grassroots and inclusive grassroots participation. We are a historic African American community that is at risk of losing precious history without collaboration and coordinated resources. Awesome. Thank you. All right. All right. So let's go a little further down <clears throat> in the application. So the brief, his brief history. Now this, they give you more space in this. Um, so this is where you get to tell a story of one of the, of a challenge you faced and how you overcome it. Now for us, our history, we started at the end, we started um, in the summer of 2020. And so our statement says, just after the George Floyd murders, our community held peaceful demonstrations of solidarity. BIPOC entrepreneurs need a place to meet and do work after 5 p.m. and also a place to sell their products and services on the weekend. We did that in the city's premier Black business district called Southside, which has been recently gentrified. Local people cannot afford to own or rent there anymore. We we're lucky enough to receive a grant from NCIDEA Foundation um, I go on and talk about that. We also created Asheville's newest festival, Grind Fest, and I talk about that. Um, we help people turn their idea into a business, help them generate one hundred fifty thousand in revenue, and then connect them with the greater business community. Ultimately, we want Western North Carolina to be known as a welcoming destination for Black business and entrepreneurs. Okay, That's so nice. your history statement needs to include some big shocking thing. It can be a data point. It can be a newspaper article. For example, George Floyd was murdered in Baltimore. That had nothing to do with Asheville, North Carolina. However, the research showed that all Black businesses experienced a spike in revenue after the George Floyd murder. So it hit, it affected everybody all over the country. You get what I'm saying? So everybody knows about it. And what we're doing here is a bit of, of psychological mastery. We are making whoever reads this, we're connecting with their heartstring first because they know about George Floyd. I don't know them. They don't know me, but we both know about George Floyd, right? Yes. So you want to find something, a newspaper article, tragedy in your community, it can be a, a big positive thing or a big negative thing. It doesn't matter. But when you tell the history of your organization, there has to be an impetus. There has to be a something that got you started. If it is your personal story that you were kicked out of school or that you were racially profiled or that you were illegally arrested. Um, some people have gone as far like if they're a domestic violence survivor, they put a paragraph about the story. Um, and you don't want to warm up to the story. You want to like jump in there and smack them in the face. You want to say, um, our founder was um, was a victim of domestic violence and decided not to be a victim anymore. Like just boom. Um, if, if, if they were kidnapped or beaten, if, if the founder, um, you know, was incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit or unfair sentencing or um, racial profiling, 
whatever it is, you want to start with a big shocking thing that that people are going to pay attention to. And then you want to lead, lead them through the timeline. You want to include some wins. So if I refer to Alina's program, Grandparent Assist, it's a brand new program. However, I might say um, grandparents taking care of grandchildren make up uh, 50% of poverty in North Carolina. Our founder is one of those grandparents that figured out how to take care of herself and her ch child's children without public assistance. But most grandparents are not so lucky. You have to really put that history out there. All right. Uh, any questions about the history statement? You want to tell a brief story? Just a quick clarity. Mm -hmm. When you write your history statement, what I hear you saying, if you're writing this in the third person, not not first person, correct? Um, you're you're writing it in first person. I mean, you're you're actually writing it in first person plural. So you're saying we, not I. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and this is a personable statement. Now there okay. are other times that you're going to say our organization and blah blah blah. But in mm -hmm. these pieces that are not so technical, this is this is like building rapport. When you first meet somebody, you're saying, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. You understand? You don't yeah. have a long time to build this connection. So are you there? Okay. All right. Okay. Any wins that you had? So um, if you got a grant from Costco. And if it was a small dollar amount, you don't have to name it. If it was a large dollar amount, you do want to name it. So you can say, uh, we received uh, grant community grants from Costco, from Walmart, um, and from Food Lion in order to buy supplies. However, we need funding to secure staff to take care of the work. All right. So Wells Fargo is going to ask you some standard questions. Is your organization certified uh, a CDFI, blah, blah, blah. They do ask for your candid seal of transparency. So any of you that um, that skipped over the guide start thing, uh, make sure you go back and fill it in because it's always going to come up. The guide star? Yes. You want to register with guide star and uh, you, you want to uh, give them as much information as possible, even if it's zeros, give them as much information as possible so that um, they will give you a star of transparency. We got our platinum star of transparency before we ever reach $50,000. So I, I must have, I wasn't here on the whole class. So the guide star is where we have to go online and fill that out. I hate to ask stupid mm -hmm. questions. Yeah, yeah. That? You go guide star and you fill it out. You register your nonprofit with guide star. Okay. They're going to give you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. They're going to give you a star of transparency, and Guide Star is free. Candid is going to cost you if you want to do extra stuff, but Guide Star is free. GuideStar.com. Yes. Thank you. All right. Organizational demographics: LMI is low to moderate income, and or small businesses served. Yes, and provide the information there. They ask for your W-9. They're asking for all this information up front because when and if you are approved, they're simply going to send you an email and mail you a check. It's not going to be a long process. They ask for your board list. Your board is the three people. Now, at this time, I had uh, six people. Um, and they ask you for the diversity of your board. Um, top executive, not Hispanic or, La or Latino, top executive, Black or American, a top executive person with disabilities, um, executive military service, non-military, male, heterosexual, or straight, um, blah, blah, blah. They're doing this for their diversity numbers. Okay. All right. Okay. Then let's get down to the questions. The organization's goals and accomplishments. So it's better to use bullets. 
So you see where I have started in 2020 as a community outreach program in 2021, secured our 501c3 in 2021, rolled 74 businesses, created 22 jobs, generated a million dollars, um, recruited 200 volunteers, created Grind Fest, hosted 4,000 people, 85% of businesses sold out of their products on the first day. City of Asheville awarded us a building for a dollar a year, uh, featured in Forbes magazine, nominated as Business Support Organization of the Year. And actually, this nomination, we did not win that award. We were number two. But it is true that we were nominated, but we were not the finalist. So even if you won, like, honorable mention, put it there, okay? In 2022, enrolled 61 new businesses, 77 were women, 46 were, went, were men, 13 were incarcerated, 23 were homeless, attracted 9,000 people from 35 states for our event, created two jobs, created Black Wall Street Jr., featured in Yahoo Finance, created an online learning institute, launched Sunday Brunch. Our Sunday Brunch series was not successful. Like, we could not get people to pay to come to Sunday Brunch, so we canceled it. The reason they didn't come is because most people were in church during that time. Like There are like 10 o'clock services, 11 o'clock services, 12 o'clock services. And so we couldn't do the Sunday brunch, but we launched it. All right. These are just bullets. Accomplishments and goals. And the other thing about this, I copy and pasted this too. Once you have this anywhere, all you do is use it over and over and over again. And this year, you see it don't have nothing for 2023. For 2023, I'm going to just add stuff here. And when we submit this grant this year, I'm going to um, I'm going to resubmit it with this same stuff. But in 2023, we did more things. And it just keeps piling up. Uh, their maximum is twenty five thousand. So we asked for twenty five thousand. They asked what you want to use the money for administration. Twenty thousand program expenses, fifteen thousand. They asked you about fundraising expenses. Um, I put zero. I mean, I encourage you all to not spend money on fundraising, at least not yet. If you ever uh, get a development director, um, there are people that spend money on banquets to raise money, envelopes and stuff to request money and all that stuff. Um, grants do not really like to pay for that stuff. So anytime you can spend zero on fundraising, that's good. All right. Now, I know we've been going for a minute. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> now, the best thing about this is that all of these things, if you do them one time, you never have to do them again. All right? Do them one time, you never have to do them again. When people get discouraged about grant writing, it's because they look at all the questions and they feel like it's too much for them to do. But most of it is copy and paste. This next part that I'm about to show you is not copy and paste. So I want you to really lock in, okay? The project title. Your project title needs to match the, the funding sources giving priority because I know that they support small businesses. I include small businesses. All right. The funding purpose. I start with um, a data point. And then I, I name a few things. Now, I take, you notice that I have, um, I use capital letters here. The reason I use all caps is because I'm drawing people's attention to it. This is another psychological writing trick. Um, use caps, all caps, to section off your writing. It makes it easier for the person who's reading. So the funding purpose, um, to avoid duplication of services, a cohort model, access to capital, connect customers with more spending power. Okay. Yeah, let me, I'm going I'm to I'm show you that again because 
Your brain automatically does it, but you don't really know that you do it. Okay. I use the all caps in order to draw your attention to specific things. What is your funding purpose, your program or project description? To avoid duplication of services, our cohort model, access to capital, connect customers with more spending power, connect the customers with more spending power. These sentences, these, these subheadings, they sound like incomplete sentences. What I'm doing is number one, I'm not wasting words with, I'm not wasting space with words that don't matter, but I'm also triggering somebody's brain. Like it's so unique that they have to look at it. And I put it in all caps. It's like somebody who wears a certain outfit and it's so weird. It, it makes you pay attention to it. You get what I'm saying? Yes. This, this, these headings, you want to start your headings with action words. All right. And you want them to be in caps. It's also going to help you organize your writing. So even if the person reading this grant got tired, I've given their minds and their eyeballs a break by putting stuff in all caps. The other thing that this does for me, I actually copy and pasted this from another grant. And each activity that I do, I name my partners. So if you do three things, you want three subheadings and you want partners that you work with on it. So if you have a job training program, you want to put a job training program or train people in workforce development, partners, community college. If you have facilitated groups, facilitated groups, your partners are um, the local counseling agency or the peer mediation team. Access to capital. Uh, connect customers with more spending power. Okay. Partners of Venture Asheville um, to engage with people. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now you all will have a copy of this, okay. so that you can um, <laughs> do it on your own. All you're doing, you're taking the three things. You're making your three things subheadings, and your name and partners. Subheading and name and partners. Uh-huh. Okay. Quick question. Yes. So say if some of your partners, okay, I'll use me as an example. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the Metro Houston area. Mm -hmm. Some of my partners that have agreed to come on board to support my nonprofit. Mm -hmm. are in um she's currently in North Carolina mm -hmm. and she has agreed her business has agreed to do the financial literacy and financial education piece. Mm -hmm. Um there's a business in uh the metro DC area that has come on board to agree to provide the um the psychological mm -hmm. piece can you name partners? And since these services can be rendered virtually, can they still be considered viable partners or do they have to be local to your area? Um, when it is, it, it depends. I would actually never name a virtual part. I would never describe a partner as virtual, either they're a partner or they're not. Right. Um, because there are some people some people are just old fashioned and they will devalue a virtual partner, even though okay. we all know that it's still just as valuable. Right. right. I mean, I'm, I'm with you all virtually. Some of you I've never seen in person. You get what I'm saying? Right. But there are some people that will automatically devalue it. So I would just name them as a partner and you do not have to name their location. OK. All right. Now, Thank you. when you are applying and this is perfectly fine for 
um, for bank grants. However, um, when you're applying for city grants and county grants, city, county, or state grants, you want to name local people. Now, okay. you're not going to have a lot of space anyway, so it's impossible to name all of your partners. But you in, you want to include your financial literacy partner, your your mental health and wellness partner. But mm -hmm. what what local entities are you partnering with? Because um, when you go after city and county grants, they want to see that you're connected to the community. OK, bank grants, not so much. They're not even connected to the community. Like gotcha. the man that's over the Wells Fargo, I have communicated with him um, by email a lot, but I've never seen him. If he was standing right next to me, I wouldn't recognize him. But okay. if he caught me, I would because I have his cell phone number saved. Okay. All right. Understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, when we go down and they ask for a detailed program and project information, um, they're gonna they ask what benefits come to Wells Fargo, and these are actually um, um things that you'll check off on their application. Uh, and this reminds me, I need to send them an email, invite them to an event. I have an event coming up on February the seventeenth, and I'm going to invite them to it. And I'm and the reason I'm going to invite them is to warm them up because I'm getting ready to ask them for more money. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to invite them to speak. I need to invite them to volunteer too. We need some people to take out the trash. Put your capital D for your grind fest um, go down. You just have grind fest. Just so oh, Lord. Uh, thank you. It's my pleasure. Especially if you're getting ready to send that out. <laughs> well, this is what they awarded last year. This has already been gotcha. awarded. Okay. I'm going to update it and uh, and thank you for mm -hmm. helping me catch that. Um, and I wrote this. I don't know. I, I wrote this pretty quickly. Um, I wrote this one real quick. It was mostly cut and paste. Uh, but once you get in the flow of it, um, you'll 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 be fine. The reason that people pay thousands of dollars for you to 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 write one grant for you. Uh, typically, this grant will cost between thirty five hundred and five thousand, and it's not because I would write this grant. It's because once this is written, what do you think you can do for all other banks? Copy and paste. Copy and paste. That's right. Out. Duplicate it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. All right. So they ask for additional benefits not listed above. Um, and so you want to tell them what else they can get. They want to be in front of people. And if you are a black led organization, they want to be presented well in the black community. So what things are you doing that are facing the community that would help Wells Fargo live out their mission? If they want to do financial literacy, then maybe they uh, they can come to the black community and provide that financial literacy there. Now, um, I actually got. I had a problem with Wells Fargo years ago. I didn't have the problem. The organization had a problem. And then I had to solve the problem. I was hired. Um, I told some of you know about the organization. I got them $300,000 in one week. Um, and that's wow. the organization that hired me while I was on federal work release. I had just gotten out of prison. They needed a director. They hired me. I knew that they didn't have any money and they promoted me to executive director. So even though I signed on, um, with a salary, I knew that they didn't even have money to pay me. So I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do? And so I I did my good writing that week. Uh. I did writing in my phone calls because we had to get some money so I could have a check. Yeah. Um, and we ended up getting $300,000. And um, it was a great, great program. Mm -hmm. But the board at that time had some people on the board that had a problem with Wells Fargo. So... Wells Fargo, some way, somehow, they support private prisons. And there's a whole movement about the prison industrial complex that has a problem with the privatization of prisons. And because Wells Fargo benefits from it, they said to Wells Fargo, we know that y'all have given us, I think they gave them 25000 but we don't want it. 
we're sending it back because we don't want to be part of y'all's like almost like we boycotting y'all's money. Oh. I said, I said, we're not boycotting their money. I said, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to say to Wells Fargo, we understand that you all have this thing going on over there. But if you give us this money, we're going to use that money to make things better over here. Oh, nice. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, yes. The hospital, our hospital reached out to me because they want to sponsor our event. As a matter of fact, I need to contact them today. They want to do a sponsorship. Our top level sponsorship is $20,000. The city or the county is suing the hospital and lots of people, nurses are boycotting and going on strike. And I mean, they really mad at our hospital. It used to be a nonprofit. And mm -hmm. it was sold to a for-profit company and people just don't like how they're railroading and handling things and making it like a, a warehouse for sick people, um, like a machine factory or whatever. I mean, they see you in the emergency room. You don't even get a room. They just come out with a kiosk on a rolling podium, you know what I mean, and give you shots and pills and stuff. You just right there. Uh, and people don't like it. And so they complain and they're in trouble. And I was like, man... If I if I accept their sponsorship, it might make me look bad. And so I spoke to some other community leader and they said, no, they said, first of all, do not affiliate yourself with whatever another company is doing. Like if they got some other stuff going on, that's their other stuff. But when it comes to money for nonprofits, all of that is designed to make things better for the community. And so when you accept money, you're saying, I'm accepting this on behalf of the community. And I'm glad that you're trying to help make things better for the community, for my population, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So we get we receive money from all kinds of companies. We receive money from marketing agencies, hospitals, um, programs. We receive money from Budweiser. We receive money from um, bars. We, we receive donations of cases of beer, even though I don't drink and I don't promote it, I don't care what they do with the beer. Um, the beer drinkers can come and take it and do whatever they want to do with it. You get what I'm saying? Yes. We receive their money. Um, and it's kind of like Robin Hood receiving from the rich so you can give to the poor. Yes. Now, my Hi. standards are clear. My standards are bottom line. Hi. And everybody How are Jay you? Hackett just don't do certain things. Hello? Yes. Please mute. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Uh huh. Go ahead and mute. So everybody knows there are certain things that Jay Hackett just does not do, and because of that there are certain things Black Wall Street is not going to show up for. Um, however, if you got some money to help promote entrepreneurship in the Black community, we shall receive your check. And so when Wells Fargo asks, "What are the other benefits?" We invite them to these things so that they can be seen in the community and be held accountable for helping out. They're still a white-led company. They probably still benefit from prisons, but do they have money and resources that's gonna help the community? And if the answer is yes, then come on, bring your information, bring your resources because we need it. All right, I went through that, that long drawn out explanation. I hope y'all understand why I said that. And, and what I, all right. Okay. They're going to ask your measures of progress. Um, you see, we measure progress by numbers, by interview and survey. And then I describe. And if you're in entrepreneurship, you can use these goals. If you don't know what to put for your measures of progress and your program design, you can actually get a pre-written grant from Grant Suite. Um, if you have a housing program or youth program or whatever, just go to the pre-written grant section and pull up a program design and you can use that. I've already done it for you. Question. Yes. With my organization, Phyllis, mm -hmm. is there a pre-written grant in the category for my organization there's not there's not one for holistic health 
But if you look at the commas that 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 we talked about in your mission statement, there is one for um, for financial wellness. There is one for health and wellness. There is one for like each of the things. And okay. because you have grants, you can actually download all of them and piece it together and say, OK, I like this. I don't like that. You get what I'm saying? Yes. OK. Financial and health. <clears throat> In our crates, though, we give non-perishable food items and things like that. Now, um, that's very unique. You're going to have to describe that. Okay. Um, but that's a good thing because grants like to pay for objects. Gotcha. I've, I've been told that this is very, um, it will go far because it's different than the norm of what's been out there. And yeah. so we're literally um, just wanted to say and ask you, I'm going to go to this company called Instacrate, mm -hmm. but basically it's a crate. It's a milk crate. Mm -hmm. And the love that's in it is the non-perishable food items, the toiletries, body care, stuff like that with the gift card. And each crate, I'm going to try to get the system set up where they're um, vetted or <clears throat> um, like intake forms, I guess, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just through schools and things of that nature, trying to get with the school city. Um and just try to do it that way for easier because I've been trying to do a cost analysis for each crate and it's coming. I don't want to say tax thing, mm -hmm. but yeah. everybody's different. So everybody yeah. needs something. Yeah, different. yeah. If the crate is a hundred dollars, if it's a hundred dollars worth of stuff, or if it's two hundred fifty dollars worth of stuff, that mm -hmm. means every crate is two hundred fifty dollars worth of stuff. And in order to give out a hundred crates, I need twenty five thousand dollars. That's so simple. I'm just going to keep it like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm thinking too much for yeah, intricate probably, details. And that's probably it. So. That's probably overwhelming. Uh-huh. Thank yeah. you. No problem. No problem. All right. So they're going to ask you to upload your Form 990 and financial statements. Okay. When they ask you to upload your Form 990, that is your tax return from the previous year. If you have, if you generated less than fifty thousand dollars, it's just a postcard, but you cannot leave this blank. All right. Um, if your nonprofit is already in place, then you need to go ahead and do your nine ninety from last year. If you haven't reached fifty thousand dollars, it's just a postcard on the IRS website. You can do it yourself. You do not have to pay somebody to do it. If you just wanted to pay somebody to do it. Um, it, they'll charge you anywhere from six hundred to a thousand dollars, and it's still just going to be that postcard. If you just wanted to pay somebody to do it, you can pay me, and I'll take five minutes, and I'll take your money and do it. But really, y'all, you can do that postcard yourself and save yourself from six hundred to a thousand dollars. Okay. Quick question. Yes. On the postcard, mm -hmm. would it just be a matter of going to the IRS's website and downloading your your um submission your application showing that it has been submitted and accepted um what you do you'll go to the irs website and you inside of the irs's search bar you'll mm -hmm. type 990-n right if you just type 990 then all of them will come up but they do give you the option for the postcard and right. it'll take you through the steps and no, I'm asking, you let click, me rephrase you just my download it okay because mm -hmm. yep. i did the postcard so what I guess what my question is, and I better phrase it. So once you go in to upload your uh, where it says your form 990 mm -hmm. and financial statement, would that mm -hmm. just be a link or a to the PDF or it's a PDF? OK, yeah. So when you when you finish, when you're at the IRS website and, and you finish the postcard, mm -hmm. download that postcard. I typically do. And um, what this is was just me uploading that postcard, that PDF. Okay. So it's not a link. It's a, um, it, it's a upload. Mm -hmm. Okay. You upload the PDF. Okay. All right. The question in the Thank box. You. If the nonprofit is new, what to use our financial statement along with that postcard? Um, if your nonprofit is new, you still should have a postcard. Um, sometimes they will ask for an audit. If they don't ask for an audit, then don't worry about anything extra. If they do ask for an audit, then you'll type a letter on letterhead. It's only like three or four lines. And you say, we do not yet have a financial audit because our receivables 
um, were just uh, were less than fifty thousand dollars last year. If you had zero receivables, then you say that, and then you attach that to your nonprofit letter, and they'll understand. All right. They ask for your budget. Your budget is the budget for the year, and that's the budget that was approved by the board. Even if it's you, and well, most of the time it's you and two other people. Um, you make sure you have that board meeting and you approve the budget. The program budget. So for us, our program is like we didn't separate the program. Our program budget is our organizational budget. And so we just upload it. It's the same thing for each. But for some people, their programs are totally separate. All right. Now, here they ask for other funding sources. This is very, very important, y'all. People like to give money when other people are giving money. So you want to list all the other monies that you have gotten. If you have received, if you have received hardly no actual dollars, but you have received volunteers, then you multiply those volunteer hours times the in-kind volunteer rate, and that gives you a dollar amount. Say that again, please. Multiply the, the volunteer hours. For volunteer hours times the in-kind rate. The in-kind rate, what is it? $33.18, something like that. All right. Now, in my area, this is my Wells Fargo connection. Um, when you are approved, you'll have a, a connection to somebody. That person will approve you. Now, if you're in small business, they ask you these questions, and these are just numbers based on how many folks you have served, all right? And that's it. Coach, I... um. Wanted to ask a question, but make a statement. I heard you meant to mention fundraiser. Um, because we give crates of love and love month is coming in February. Okay. Um, my daughter, you know, the grant that I did get from Costco, mm -hmm. I wanted to start because sometimes when you're overthinking, you wait too long to start giving and doing. And I didn't want to do that at the top of the year here. So my daughter um, is hosting a, a fundraiser via uh, it's free we don't pay anybody for anything and it's simply popcorn we've utilized it for our youth department at our church before and uh -huh. in four days made over twenty thousand dollars oh yes and, and so what i'm doing is i'm using legs i call them legs i'm duplicating me so i'm having people i don't know people's people so i'm just asking them to get i send them the link and they sell as well. And all of them go under the code that my daughter created for Indelible Holistic mm -hmm. Solutions, the nonprofit. And I get all of the money. Now, with a fundraiser, they keep half. So if we do 20, we get 10. Mm -hmm. If we do, you get what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you um, because this is so on, kind of on a spur of the moment, and mm -hmm. February is on the horizon. Um, I'll be flying to California for a few days with my daughter's job or whatever. And so I wanted to do, I'm doing the fundraiser starting Friday. It's only four days. That's okay. Good. It ends on the 30th. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll get the money. And I, I just wanted to get together with my um, some of my board members <clears throat> and go purchase all of the product. Do you think it's wise to this? Because I don't have the space. I wanted to rent a um, climate control um, storage to stack crates and the product. So that I don't have any like overhead, 
like because I, I can't pay for any like I'm I'm an, I'm partnered with um, what is called OFRC One Family Resource Center, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we have F, I can utilize it anytime I want on the calendar. Just put my name on there for events or what have you. Mm-hmm. But they don't. We it's huge, beautiful, beautiful. But mm-hmm. they don't have a separate room just for my so stuff. How would you guard your stuff or protect it? I mean, would it be safe in a corner? Oh, it, it's no, 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 no. That's why I was asking. Would it be wisdom just to get a um a climate control storage unit? Pay for that. I would and, um, I would not get a storage unit until I had money to pay for it. Yeah, that's what I, I'm that asking when I get the funds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and, and so and we have a storage system. unit and we pay for it with grant funds. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Some of the fundraising money. I wanted to utilize it for so I because February is coming and I'm going to need to have this space so that we can transport it to build the crates mm-hmm. where the people are going to be picking them up. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, it does. So, I would um I would definitely use grant money to pay for the the warehouse space. Um mm-hmm. if you were going to do the fundraiser um a shorter fundraiser is more impactful than a long fundraiser because you have momentum. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're doing a five day fundraiser and you get everybody pushing for those five days, that's really, mm-hmm. really yes. all right. Yeah. Um, as far as filling, getting objects for the crates and you need to store this stuff. Um, I would take your sponsorship letter, your nonprofit letter to all of the grocery stores, all the Walmarts, Costco, all of them, and just get stuff, get stuff um, and get them as volunteers, enlist them as volunteers Ask your bank, ask your credit union, ask your whatever, them as volunteers to stuff it, you know, stuff the crates, make the crates, build the crates. They're going to want pictures of it. They're going to love it. Um, And then you're going to ask them if they'll sponsor the the warehouse that you need for the year. And if it's like $150 a month, then you're looking at like just $1,500 for the year. Got it. That That's what I needed. I couldn't think of how to do it so that's what i needed thank you so much right that's good so on your budget on your your annual budget put storage for the crates crates of love and that way every year you know that you need 1500 or 2000 dollars just for the storage okay i surely will i'm gonna go back this is gonna be a replay for us that are members Mm -hmm. okay and i'll annotate everything you just said thank you so much all right, no problem. All right. Uh anybody else? Any other questions? Now we went through a lot of information for one grant. But remember, y'all, when you do it the first time, you save it and you copy and paste it for all other grants. Bank grants, they want to be known in the community. Now, even though they are required to give money back. Secretly, they want people to open bank accounts with them. All right. They're not going to require that you open a bank account with them. But it goes a long way when you can demonstrate that you are already connected in the community and they can come to something where people are there. You want to invite them to speak, invite them to present. The thing that I'm going to invite them to, we have the Black History Month Legacy Awards, and I'm giving out an award called Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, And um, I want a bank to come and present that award. Um, And sometimes the banks, like, they kind of fight. They secretly fight. It's not like a vicious bloodbath or anything. But sometimes they want to be the only bank there. And so I space it out so that I don't have two banks at one event at the same time because all of them profess to be the best bank. And I don't care where people get their checking accounts at. I mean, that's fine. But my job is to bring money into the community. Um, and that's what I do. And if a bank uh, wants to come and help out, I want them to come help out and leave their check at the door. All right. All right. Well, any other questions before I go? All, right. All the members have have this recording. You'll get it. Any folks that are not that are not members, um, I guess you can you can request it. We'll 
we'll do um we'll give it to you just for thirty thirty seven dollars and you'll have this grant um you have this recording this grant and um we'll do a list of fifty bank grants all right we'll do that uh mark can you pull a list of fifty that's the bank and their link to a grant well, just the link thank you okay sir um the the bank's grant website so that you can go and you can you can apply um we haven't written the 50 for you um but this way you don't have to um you don't have to like just be struggling on where to find them thank you all right all right well y'all have a good day and um i'll see y'all later i just Thank got you. A, another email from my lawyer that uh, six-figure grants was approved by the U.S. Trademark Office too. It's oh my god! Awesome week. You know, I, I, saw I paid. Um, yeah, that was the the software grant suite. When I when I asked Attorney Taylor to to do them for me, she mm -hmm. did like five of my trademarks all at once. Nice. And, um, the one six-figure grants. What the U.S. government did. They actually asked me to prove that I have helped people get six figure grants. And so I said, well, that's fine. And so um, so I just sent them grant announcements and attorney tell. She said, Well, that's enough. Dr. Hackett, you don't got to send any more. Like, well, y'all gonna stop playing with me. Like, <laughs> right. Right. She said, that's enough. Um, and it was it was approved. She's supposed to be somewhere on an island or on a beach somewhere. But she took time to let me know it was approved. That's cool. Yeah. Congratulations again. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope all of you are going to be in Dallas um, with a conference with Derek. Um, I think it's it's like limited space. It's only going to be like two or three hundred people, I heard. Um, and so, but it's going to be nice. So uh, y'all get your tickets. I'm going to be there. Um, when is it? Be there, a whole business family going to be there. Doctor Hank said, "When is uh -huh. it? April, the weekend of April nineteenth." Okay. Yeah, y'all. Before y'all go, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Well, y'all finish with. I don't got nothing else to say about this grant. I just want to tell y'all what happened with my son last night. Sure. <laughs> I know y'all. They have to go. Y'all go ahead. But I'm gonna just tell y'all. What happened with uh with my son? Uh, Mark, while we're doing that, you put the link to the thing in there. Um, so last night my son came and talked to me, and he said, he said to me, he said, Father, I have a conundrum. I said, Well, now my son just turned 18, and so he's having all these epiphanies. He yesterday after dinner, he said, Um, Father, I have the urge to want to get married. And I said, Why? He said, I don't know. I just got the urge. I said, well, go lay down and it'll leave. <laughs> like, uh, he said, Why are you dismissing my feelings? I said, well, Sebastian, it's just a passing thought. You really want to be married? He said, no, it's just a feeling. I said, okay, we'll go lay down. So then last night he came to me. It was like 930. He said, father, I have a conundrum. I said, a conundrum? What are you talking about, boy? And um, so he said, how he said this is the conundrum he said i intend to be a high value man um but how can i do that without being promiscuous i said uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> you get this stuff from? You got your hand full. <laughs> and so um and so i remember i didn't meet this guy i heard he he dead now um the seven the samuels guy kevin samuels keith samuels or whatever and so he's the one that talked about the high value stuff. And I I never listened to him. So I don't know a, about like all the details of what he said it takes to be high value. So I told my son, I said, listen, boy, I said, you do not have to be promiscuous to be a high value man. I said, if you want to have high value, then you want to get real smart, make a lot of money, pay your bills, be a good person, be reputable. So much so that if a lady takes you home to see her parents, she can honestly brag about you and not be lying. Like, be that kind of guy. 
And so um, so then I asked him where he got this conversation from, like, where did this come from? And he started talking. He started telling me about him and his friends talking. I said, Sebastian, you talking about being acceptable to other teenagers just like you? Like, <laughs> y'all right. just get together and no come up with stuff. stupid stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and they really do this. They really do this. You'll be surprised. They just get together and come up with stupid stuff. And so I explained to him, I said, um, I said, now you grown, you're, you're 18 and you are going to be able to do whatever you want to do at some point when you get out of my house. Um, but the moment that you give in, you have just limited your price. I said, if a lady and I told this, I mean, this is my son. I said, if a young lady shows you her breasts and that's all it takes to get you to have sex with her, then now the word gets out. All you got to do is show them your titties. And and Sebastian will, will go there with you. Um, I said, if she thinks that she can buy you, then she'll that'll work to get around. I said, but what if, what if you reserve yourself and just keep building, keep building, keep building? Then one day you're gonna attract some other lady that's also building, building, building. Just like you don't want nobody that's all run through, don't nobody else want nobody that's all run through. Right. And uh, and he was sitting and there, he was so listening, tough. and I got kind of nervous. I'm like, Lord, I, I hope he's really listening because, you know, fathers don't always get this chance to talk to their sons like this. <laughs> so I was like, listen, you don't want to be run through. You don't want her to be run through. Um, but when you bring her home, you want to bring home somebody that you can brag about and not be lying. And you want her to take somebody home that they can brag about and not be lying. Absolutely. And understanding value, because value is key. And unfortunately, a lot of people think that everything um, in this life right now, especially the generation um, at hand, it's all about the stuff that's not valuable. Everything, you know, everything that looks good and glitters and all that great stuff, they think that's what's it. But that's not where the value is. It's, it's, it's not. It's not. And I'm I'm thinking these teenage boys, 17, 18 year old, they just got together and came up with a philosophy. Now, gratefully, my son came to me and asked me about it. But what if I wasn't there? You know right. what I mean? Absolutely. And, and, and then, you know, no judgment because my mom raised me, but she actually and she was a single mom. But uh, she put me around a whole bunch of other strong men that helped. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, any of you that saw the post of the university giving me the award, there's a guy on there that says something. His name is Eric Susong. And I, I said, like, this would have never happened without you. And he's like, well, I just wanted to be a sentence in your story. That guy, he's a very simple man. He's a very quiet man. But that man came to me when I was 13 years old and I was going crazy. And he was just solid for me. I mean, he was so solid. He told me, Jay, when you get when you get grown, always let your wife drive the nice car. Don't let people call your house at crazy times of night. Don't ever mess with anybody that don't have nothing to lose, because if they don't care about their life, they won't care about yours. Exactly. I mean, this is this is the yeah. kind of stuff this mm -hmm. man told me. You get what I'm saying? Yes. And and I've I mean, I've been blessed to do some spectacular things and be around some spectacular people. But that guy is the most important man in my life because he showed me exactly what a man and a husband is supposed to be. Foundational. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, and he he pastors a really small church. I think the church can only fit about 60 people. And I go back there and I just I just can't wait to 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 celebrate him and hug him and and tell him thank you. He like, what is all this for? I'm like, Eric, you have no idea. Mm -hmm. what you told me the stuff that you put in me is is just solid like it carries it's like the stick to your ribs kind of stuff you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so but, it's wrong huh not just that at least it's you wrong. listen because sometimes people could talk and talk to you blue in the face and then go listen for nothing well, least I, think, you have, I, least I think i just i just have listened i i listened enough i remember one day my mom i was getting in trouble Ooh, i was getting in trouble and my mama called him she said eric you better come get him because i'm getting ready to oh. kill him. Oh, i'm getting yeah. ready to kill him. <laughs>
That's you better get him because I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. See, that's, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you was listening. Yeah. At the end and of the he, day, you caught on. He calmed her down, and I don't know if any of y'all mamas like my mama. When she start talking, she get herself riled up. Like it, it like I'm thinking she about to calm down, but she start talking about it and start thinking. She get riled up again. But he calmed her down, and then he did come and get me. Uh, so we went out to eat, and then he took me back home. But um, but yeah, yeah. He's, no, he's, my mother gave us something like the look. It was just the look. When she looked at you, you knew what that meant. She ain't talking. She ain't. She said, wherever you act up, that's where you're going to get the beat down. If it's in public, <laughs> she don't care. And she said, when I get out of jail, if they take me, when I get out, I'm going to beat you for me getting put in jail. I mean, so we just knew we 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 knew yeah. what was not to do. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. My son is thirty three years old now, and I, uh, I'm a single mom. I was a single mom as well, and yeah. a twenty three year old daughter. And I understand. So when you say things like that, it's like, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's, I that's mean, what it, my mother too. She wasn't no joke. And then not just that. When my grandfather was around too, it's like you don't get one beat, honey. You get two <laughs> beats. And remember back in the day, they had the switches, not the belt. Oh hmm. Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a whole different ballgame. And I, I asked my son about these guys that he, I mean, I know his friends, but, you know, for the sake of the conversation, I wanted it to like really be in his face. And I said, tell me about these guys. What have they accomplished? What do they want out of their life? Right. And, and he was like, well, you know, nothing really. And I, I told him, I said, one day you're going to have to decide on your friends um, because whoever you hang around, like eventually it's going to rub off on you. And you're gonna have to decide. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's okay to hang out and play, but when y'all start talking about thought patterns and like this thing is going against how you believe, then you got to decide how much your mental space you're gonna give them. I, you really have to think about that. Absolutely. But this social social media around you, because I'm trying to get the grant money. <laughs> the social media, you know, the social media is taking over because. People listen to everything that yeah. they say on social media. What was that guy? He was supposed to be an Italian, the Italian guy, French guy. He was like, bonjour. And he wasn't French at all. <laughs> yeah. So from and France. Then, He's in whether it's, I mean, just like you said, whether it's, whether it's social media, whoever you're around, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rub off and you're going to start believing it. And even, I think somebody says something like in the grant world. Because this is what I do all the time, this is normal to me. It's kind of like my language. You get what I'm saying? Um, if you hang around it, like you're going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it looked real difficult. And Lord, Alina been on all these calls. <laughs> you're going to pick it up. And in the beginning, you might just be doing smaller things, but eventually it's going to click. Um and like these ideas are going to seep in. So if it was like the issue of my son hanging around these crazy boys, um, if he keep opening his mind to them, then it's going to sink in. Um, but it's the same thing in the positive. If you open your mind to this type of thinking and this type of teaching, it's going to, Lord, this is my son right here. He calling me right now. I'm putting him on speakerphone. Hello. Hello, Father. Yes. What's going on? Um, I just got out of school. I'm at Staples. I came to get envelopes. What did you come to get envelopes for? For the shipping. The ship. Oh, I'm in class right now, and I was talking about you. Can y'all hear him? Yes. Yes. Yep. Sebastian, say hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, hello. Sebastian. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you all? Good. What are you going to Staples for? Right. Shipping envelopes. Uh, be thorough, boy. <laughs> Shipping envelopes to ship my books in. Uh -huh. What books? Right. My new book that just released. <laughs> Congratulations, Sebastian. Congrats. Yes. All right. So what was your question for me? Um, If we needed anything else from Staples. Um, you probably need to get a toner for um, for the printer. Did you do that? Is that all we need? Yes. Yes, sir. Is there a specific type of toner? 
Uh, yeah, you might have to come to the house and, and see what kind of toner it is and then go back. I'm all the way in short pump. Why are you in short pump? It's a staples around the corner. No, there isn't. The office max around the corner. They do the same thing. Yes, sir. Well, I'm already here. Oh, did you go to Staples Mill for some? I mean, short pump for something else? No, sir. It's because it's staples here. You said staples. Oh, because I said staples. I'm sorry. Yes. Anytime I say staples, you can also go to Office Max. They're the same. Yes. <laughs> Specificity. All right. Or they can so just, this... you know, take a picture Office of Office Max is closing down. Office oh, yeah. I can take a picture. Down. Lord, they said I can take a picture and send it to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you think that would be a good idea? Yes, sir. <laughs> There's your birthday gift. Happy birthday, Sebastian. All right, y'all. Lord, I would go. Uh, let me go take this picture. Or y'all can wait and I'll come back. I got until three o'clock. <laughs> Office Max is going out of business, y'all. <laughs> Office Max is going out of business. Hold on, real quick. Yes, it is. Oh, so you telling us to go and stock up now? No, it ain't seen nothing was worth it. Uh, Elena, did you read my a message, please? Well, okay then. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I shown up with you. Yeah. This has been very informational. I do know that it's been really, really good. It has it's always off the chain. I love it. <laughs> I learn something every time I come here. Oh well, yes. And Elena, you are a member, correct? Yes. Um, the manufacturer number. Oh yes, I am. And they'll be able to tell you what kind to get. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, I'm back, y'all. Last him. I told him to go to Staples, and I guess he searched the Staples, and it was in another neighborhood. But well, that's you a good thing he up. went there. That's a good thing he went there because I can say Office Max is closing down. There's a lot of stuff. Is is not there, or it's not even worth it. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's around the corner. I don't. I don't go out much. Yeah, that's where I used to get the business cards and stuff, but no longer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so anyway, I was glad that he he asked me about the the thing. Uh, but those those boys, um, a lot of them don't have any men in their life, um, and they're not really talking to their moms. Well, that's a good thing he had you and he could talk to you. See, some um some guys have sons that can't talk to them, so they go other places. Even though they have their little conversation on the side here, but he coming to you. So you're doing your job. Yeah. Good job. Are you trying? It's scary. And and I have I have two girls and a boy. Um, and of course it's it's something. It's always something. My little girl is in college. She's a sophomore. But um, but with my little boy, it's just there's so much out there against black boys. Like um, he got he got pulled over in the car one time. And my rule for, for the children, our rule for the children, you always have to tell us first. Like, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, call us first. Don't call no, I mean, whether it's school or principal, like something happened at school that was like, I need to call my father. That's good. Like, that's yeah. The they have to call. And he got it. He got okay. pulled over. And um, so the cops were behind him and he called. And I got nervous because I'm aware, like, they really could kill him for no reason. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's a real thing in America. Like, yeah. cops really do kill black boys. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I feel. I got two uh, black boys. So, <laughs> so you, you, you get it? And uh, I get it. And, and but that's not just the black weird. boys. You got to you gotta think about it. Everybody talk about the boys, but they doing it to the female, too. Yeah, it's it's less, but they still doing it. And And, like, today we got social media and cameras to catch it. But what about beforehand? They... They, they didn't just start doing it. You know what I mean? They've been getting away with it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so um, when he, he got pulled over, I told him to put it on the camera phone and put it on the dashboard so I could see and hear everything. And um, I told him, put it. And I'm like, I'm telling him stuff to keep him alive. You get what I'm saying? That's kind mm -hmm. of that. I'm like, all right, Sebastian, take your wallet out. Put it on your lap. Uh, put your Put both your hands on the wheel. Um, go ahead and roll your window down now so you don't have to make any moves when the when the cops are pulling up. 
And I had to catch myself doing this, but this is how I had to, you know what I mean? Understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just got to do it. And then like my son, he didn't grow up rough at all. So right. Not really street smart. Right. He thinks that just because it's true, you can say it. And just because it's right, everybody got to do it. And now I'm like, mm -hmm. no, that's not how the real world right. is. So I was like, listen, don't say anything to them cops. Just That's answer their questions and I'm on my way. That's it. And tell them your father is on the phone and he's on his way and they can call me if they want. You right. don't have to do anything. You can still follow the rules. And and it is the crazy thing is there's supposed to be no rules, but you can still follow the rules. <laughs> it, and it, it still happens. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. it, it, when they in rage and trying to do some stuff and think they got, you know, mm -hmm. got all this authority. Oh, no, it don't matter yeah. at this moment. And it don't matter whether you doing right or doing wrong, whether you talk smart or talk ignorant. Somehow these cops just crazy. Mm -hmm. and so it's a heavy spirit um, on the on the it's it's ramping out here. Um, mm -hmm. Murder is is very high. Um, it's so much going on in the world, and just being prayerful over your children, whatever their age is, it doesn't even matter. Like mm -hmm. I said, I have a 33 year old with, he has a family and my 23 year old, uh, 32 and uh, 23, but um, their ages are changing in a couple months. Mm -hmm. My point is whatever the age is, my mother, before she passed away in 22, she yet prayed over her children and I'm in my fifties and you know, you just, yeah, you, you don't want it to sound so, um, religious because religiosity is not that that's man stuff. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm a believer. I'm a bona fide believer. Um, I follow what the word says. And when you put that oil, <clears throat> it's not in the oil that does a thing. It's in what's attached to the oil. So when you put it around your home, put it over your children, tell them, you know, they, they need to pray for themselves mm -hmm. and the things that you have done, you implemented wisdom and you gave that to your son. So he too would know how to handle a situation uh, when it's coming on. He already know in the back of his mind, get your wallet out, put your phone on the yeah. dash, call dad first. Do a, he, That's engra engrafted in him. So yeah. um, those are things that are necessary, especially from a black man, mm -hmm. especially it's, in it's this time. Out there. Because it's so pertinent to stay it alive. It is. I do. I had to talk to my my daughter. She was uh, she was home for the holidays, and um, and she went out at two o'clock in the morning, and uh -huh. like normally, I mean, she stays out late. She's a college student, so they go and and mm -hmm. do. But she's normally with her female friends, but she walked out by herself, and I was like, Empress, where are you going? Um, she said, I'm going out with my friends. And my rule for her is that she always needs to drive. Don't ever be stuck somewhere where you got to wait on somebody else to come get you or take you home or whatever. And so um, she had like she had she had picked up this job. I don't know what kind of job she worked at. Old Charlie's where she only worked like once every three months. But she uh, she she went out um, and she rode with somebody else. And I told her, I said, Empress, I don't like that. I don't like that. Now she's 19 or 20 and she can do. And she said, why well, I've never gone out that late by myself in somebody else's car. I mean, I kind of felt bad. And then she said, I'm glad you said something. I'm like, thank you. Cause I was going to mm -hmm. say something anyway, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Cause they want to hear truth. They really do. <laughs> and they want you to care. Um, and that's why they act out when they don't feel like they're getting it, the care or the, truth or whatever and they do all these foolish things but just a hint to the wise um with the college stuff my daughter stayed on campus she graduated she's about to walk across stage again with her masters thank the lord mm -hmm. uh, but she's not on campus anywhere she's full-time job working and um doing full-time school when she was on the campus we did learn good friends and i and i'll say again good friends uh had the young lady they they did dinner at each other's house and all that, met family members. Mm -hmm. The two friends ended up, and this is not to scare you, but just to raise, raise awareness. They ended up murdering this girl. Oh. The friends, they murdered her. 
right here, West Georgia, I believe it was. It made all, it, it was so bad. I could not believe it. And all those people knew this young lady. And why didn't she come back to school? Why didn't she come home? Why didn't she? And the kids said, well, I didn't hear from her. The same ones that murdered her are the ones that kept, yes, sir. So oh. I'm just going to say, reiterate to your daughter, drive her own vehicle. Yeah. Um, and all that great stuff. That's not to give you yeah. a scare tactic, yeah. Yeah. but it is to let you know that yeah. people are doing some very gross things they, and they, that's they are. on they the campus. Oh uh, yeah, this, this the world is crazy, but we got we got to do what we got to do as parents. Um, Absolutely. And uh, and I, I I was I was glad that he said something, and it's uh I was thinking about it all day, and so when he called, I didn't know what he was calling about this afternoon. Cause he on a roll with these, he dropping these big old question bombs on me. And, and that's good. It doesn't make me. I He's love. It. I'm, yeah, bring bring it on. Bring it right here, right here to the house. <laughs> Ask none of your friends about this because they stupid. <laughs> or have a session with them. Like bring the friends uh, to the house. I now. probably need to. I probably need to do that. Yeah. Because whatever these these guys come up with amongst themselves is just crazy. And you know what else? I'm and I'm gonna go, but invite their dads. Some of their dads may um get to know you and things like that and partake because you may be educating them on some things on the way to answer. Mm -hmm. That's not to say none of us are perfect, but yeah. you can piggyback on one another's information, whatever you're rendering to your son, so to mm -hmm. speak. That they're just sitting in on a conversation almost, but they're really there to kind of mm -hmm. learn some stuff and give some stuff that you may need to know. I don't, you know, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, this is some stuff out there that parents don't even know about. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, y'all. I didn't well, took y'all so whole afternoon. Y'all uh, are very welcome. Uh, remember the bank grants are coming available in February. Um, so that door is going to open. Uh, you have this recording if anybody wants the list of, um, I think we have a list of 50 bank grants, uh, plus this recording. And I um, I typed out a little tutorial kind of on the steps and what to look for and what to do. Um, if somebody wanted to pick that up, um, Mark put the link in there. Um, we'll do that for just $30, $37. All the members have this, um, you have this recording. So you can go back to it. Um, but if you wanted that other stuff, you can pick up everything together. All right, y'all. Well, have an amazing rest of your day. Y'all have a good day, and I will talk Thank to you. Thank you, you too. Didi. All right, bye bye. Bye. Didi. Didi.